y'all Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about a little something different. I've had a lot of people ask me what was your favorite part of the Appalachian Trail or um, where is somewhere I could go and hike for the weekend or a three-day weekend or a day hike that you know I could see something really awesome because not everyone can put uh, an Appalachian Trail through hike as their priority right now at this point in their life, right? Some people are raising children, some people are in the middle of a career and can't have off six months. So I'd like to highlight some areas of the trail that I really, really enjoyed during my through hike and hopefully it'll get some of y'all out there checking these places out over the weekends. And if y'all like this, I'll continue to highlight different areas of the trail and hopefully get y'all out there checking them out. Now, if you are going to do sections of the AT or even day hikes, anything, if you're gonna be on the AT, I highly recommend getting the Appalachian Trail Guidebook. It does change a little bit every year, um, but you could even get one that's like a year or two old. And when you're doing a section, it's pretty much gonna give you, um, you know, uh, relevant distances and everything like that, that should still be correct. The mile marker um, might be a little bit different. For example, for me in 2015, uh, the mile marker for a certain location might have been mile 712 and then in a different book it might be um, 716 but you know it, it doesn't really change that much from year to year the at guide is great because it tells you about shelters it tells you about towns and parking areas shuttle services um lodging you know just all kinds of information so if if backpacking on the at is going to be something that you're doing then it's definitely worth it today when i refer to points on the trail i'm going to be referring to mile markers that um were set in 2015 so again they might be a little bit different than if you buy a brand new book but the section of trail is still that I'm highlighting is still gonna be um, about the same length. Okay, so the first section that I wanna tell y'all about, I chose because of course I really enjoyed it. Um, there were a lot of beautiful things that I saw in this section and um, it's kind of more centrally located. It's about a third of the way up the trail around mile 700, which is in Virginia. Um, so that way it's not like way down south or you know way up north in Maine and maybe it'll be more accessible for some of y'all. Also, there is a town nearby Roanoke, Virginia uh, that does have an airport. So if you might be flying in from somewhere, you know, way far away, there is an airport nearby. Okay, so the two endpoints for this section are gonna be Catawba, Virginia, which is the southern end, and then either Daleville, Troutville area, um, which is going to be your northern end. Now, for each of the two ends, I have two different um, spots that you could enter or exit the trail. So um, that's going to end up allowing you to make this section either 19.8 miles or 27.2. So it just depends on how long you want to be out there. And, um, you know, if you want to make it like a two day trip or a three day trip, or if you really want to enjoy more of the camping and just hanging out at camp and hiking only a little bit each day, or you may just want to make miles and, you know, be one of the ones that wants to get to camp kind of later and wake up early and get going. So, you know, you might be more interested in the 27.2 mile stretch. And then also for those of y'all who may be passing by this area um, and just want to go on a day hike, there is an opportunity for that in this, um, in this section of trail too, where you'll still get to see something really pretty. I'll put some notes on these mile markers and road names in the show more um, in the info below this video. I'm gonna have a link to my blog post that corresponds with this and I'll have some additional information and maps, things like that to kind of help you out so you don't have to go too crazy taking notes. Let's go ahead and get into some of the details. Okay, so the two mile markers that I have for you in Catawba, which again is the southern point, um, are either mile marker 702.1, and that's uh, where the trail intersects Virginia 624, which is also Newport Road. Now there's not a parking area there, so keep that in mind, but I have a solution for you there. Or a little bit more north on the trail at mile marker 708, Virginia 311, uh, there is a parking area there. But in Catawba, there is a hostel called Four Pines Hostel. It is open year round and they do have shuttle services. So, and they may, you can call and find out, they may shuttle whether you stay there or not. You know, you might can just um, pay them and, and park at, uh, you know, say Virginia 311 and, and get them to shuttle you up to the northern point, wherever that is for you, and then you can hike back to your vehicle. All right, on your northern end, you have either Daleville or Troutville, and Daleville uh, US 220 is at mile marker 727.8, and then Troutville is at US 11, that's where the, the trail intersects, it intersects US 11, and there is parking at that area. 
um, which is mile marker 729.3. So again, that's less than two miles apart. So you, you can probably just stretch it onto travel, you know, if you want to park there. There are a lot of lodging options in Daleville. So you can check into those. I stayed at the Howard Johnson, uh, a bunch of us hikers all piled up there. In Troutville, there's actually an opportunity to camp for free. So at the Troutville Park and uh, Fire Station, they have free camping, but there are no pets allowed. Um, and they also do, it says uh, free laundry and showers. So um, if you do go northbound uh, from, from Catawba to Troutville, you know, maybe you want to take a shower when you get there and just camp for free. So you might park there, have somebody or that shuttle service, whatever, take you uh, south to Catawba and then you hike north to your vehicle there and, you know, camp before you leave. So there are all kinds of options and that's why I really like this area to suggest to y'all because um, there are shuttle services and, and lodging opportunities and like I said, that airport. So what did I like so much about this stretch of trail? Well, some of y'all might already know that near Catawba, Virginia is one of the most photographed areas on the Appalachian Trail and that's McAfee Knob. It's where that cliff juts out and a lot of people go and sit on the end of it and then send, you know, their mothers the picture to try to give them a heart attack. Um, and of course, I, I did the same and, <laughs> and my mother loved it. It's really, really a beautiful thing to see and you could park there at what I was talking about, mile 708 at the parking area at Virginia 311 and make a day hike out of it so you can park there just go up to McAfee Knob turn around and come back to your vehicle so that's the day hike opportunity in this section um, but anyway it's a, it's a great way to start your hike if you're going northbound and right past that um, going north is Tinker Cliffs area and there's like a half mile stretch of trail where you're just doing like a cliff walk and I was kind of hitting that near sunset and it was just gorgeous it was just really, really pretty. So those are the two big um, peaks or climbs that you're gonna experience during this. And um, everything else, the terrain really isn't that bad. Um, and the elevation change throughout this whole um, section is gonna be anywhere from like um, elevation 1300, which is your um, Delville Travel End, um, up to like 3000 foot elevation, which is around McAfee Knob. Your biggest climb going northbound is gonna be climbing up to McAfee Knob and you'll cover a thousand feet of elevation in about 1.7 miles or so. And then heading up to Tinker Cliffs is gonna be um, about a 750 feet change in elevation. And that's gonna be over about the same 1.7, 1.8 miles or so. But it's, you know, just take your time take it slow, enjoy the sights around you, enjoy taking breaks. You know, a lot of people feel bad when they have to stop and take their back off and take a break, but I'm like, whatever, you know, just enjoy the sights around you and, and listen to the critters and, and um, enjoy talking to people. If you've got folks with you, you know, your friends, family, if you're by yourself, just enjoy the time to kind of just reflect on life and, and just to be, you know, still and, and, and relax. There are four different shelters that you could potentially stay at um, throughout uh, this stretch of trail. They are John Spring Shelter, Catawba Mountain Shelter, Campbell Shelter, and Lambert's Meadow Shelter. They all have privies, they all hold six people, and they all have camping areas you know, right around the shelter. Now, the uh, John Spring Shelter and the Catawba Mountain Shelter, those two do not really have um, reliable water sources that does not mean there won't be water that just means you know there's a chance that it might not be flowing real strong or it, i mean if there's a drought <laughs> it may not um it may not be flowing at all so that is something that you want to consider but you will in this stretch pretty much pass a water source you know at least once a day another thing to note near the section of trail uh in the Daleville Troutville area you'll um come across these massive power lines and I just thought that they were real cool to see you know up that close and everything and then on the Catawba end um something that I have to mention there is this restaurant that's a family style restaurant and it's about a mile from the trailhead actually uh the owner let us camp in the gazebos <laughs> while um while I was there because we all got there and we ate dinner and we were so full and it got dark and he was like do y'all just want to sleep in the gazebos but anyway uh they're only open at least when I went through in 2015 Thursday through Sunday so check the hours on that at. but if y'all are doing a weekend hike you should hit it right anyway and uh, I would check the hours and you might even want to consider going uh, southbound and finishing your hike there that way you can uh, just gorge yourself or get a good meal in before you start your hike um, you know if you decide to stay at that hostel in Catawba and then you know they could run you over there let you eat real good the night before so you have a lot of different things that you'll see and experience and opportunities and um, 
But if you have any uh, questions about this section of trail, just um, ask me below. I might know the answer, you know, or at least I can tell you what I learned from my experience. If any of y'all have hiked in this section, please comment below and share your experience. You know, I'm trying to build this community here where we can all kind of help each other out with tips about backpacking in general or, you know, to highlight sections of trail that we like hiking and things like that. And if you like what I'm doing here and you would like to support me, you can click on show more and see info on how to do that below. And we will see y'all next time. Okay, so I am here at Amicalola uh, State Park and I am, there's this nice little compartment overhead, so that's the opening, um, where you can put like a headlamp. Yeah.